Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and as you can see today I'm having another look at Anno 1800 because the solo rules are officially out. I think they're out for quite some time. There is or right now officially they're only available in German as far as I know but some great guy on Geek already translated those using Google Translator so thanks so much for that. The solo rules pretty much come with a 10 chapter campaign pretty much following I would say the narrative of the computer game but there are also let's say somewhat more standard rules at the back I think that's the starting at the back of those rules which lets you pretty much let you play the game as a beat your own high score chasing kind of game which I'm not really into so I'm really really happy that um, we are having a full-blown you have to win in order to really win this and not just beat your own kind of score. Today I'm having a look at the very first scenario which seems to be from a rules perspective very simplified. I'm not sure if they are really simple. That's something I'm going to try find out to really make it through the first chapter. But the longer you go within the campaign the more rules the more of those industries the more of the core mechanics come into the picture pretty sure you don't have to whatever start from the first chapter so if you would like you can start directly with chapter five or so though I think there is nothing that um, at least from what I've seen at least the first three chapters I have checked there's nothing that reverse words back to your let's say outcome of your whatever what happened in ch chapter two for example yeah, and I think with that being said, let's have a quick look at the setup of the very first chapter. And as you can see, we are only using those core blue industries. So we are not going to build any sails, nor goods, not glass or cotton in this case. And yeah, that's basically what you have to live with. Additionally, we have this uh, deck of cards here, which is our time. I think we have 25 actions in this scenario to basically get rid of all of our cards in our hand. And speaking about our hand of cards, which are over here, you're removing some cards from the deck, basically 11 cards that you simply cannot build because you don't have access to the industries, for example. We are also not using, I think these are craftsmen, in the English version of the rules, you only have your starting farmers and your workers in that, and which also means you're only starting the game with green and blue kind of cards. Additionally, you're also not using any of those benefits here. So when we are building this, normally you can use those for a free action to get yourself an engineer, for example, or here you can get three upgrades. In this very first chapter of the game, we are completely ignoring those. So the only goal we have in this very first mission is to play all our characters out on the board. We are not scoring any points, whatnot. The only winning condition is before the game runs out we have to play those seven cards if we're adding more people in there which I think we can still do actually if if we feel the need and of course we will continue to draw more cards but that's really on us now if we want to do that or not and honestly with that being said we should be pretty much good to go we can use basically all of our actions but no actions again we don't have any trade tokens so any marine tokens here we have uh, removed those we cannot explore we cannot trade i think trading is a thing in the solo mode but i think will only come as of scenario or chapter three in this campaign and this is what i also want to ask you guys if you want me to continue playing this game as a campaign i might jump over the second chapter right into chapter three because then again all this trading comes into the picture but again i will let you decide if you think oh that feels interesting um let's continue continue playing this very first mission shouldn't take me considerably long but yeah let's see how things go there are narratives in each of those um, individual chapters and deep l was kind enough to translate those for me no affiliation here whatsoever okay and that's the founding of Ditchwater. this very first chapter and it says betrayal the line sent to you by your sister hannah good blew your mind your father was imprisoned for alleged treason against the crown. You immediately set out on your return journey from the new world. But when you arrived, you could only mourn his death. Your horror that apart from you and Hannah, only your uncle Edward attended the funeral is only overshadowed by your endless grief. 
A pathetic upstart, Edward suddenly rages. Have you seriously returned to mourn the death of a traitor? Uncle, Hannah interrupts him. Father was an honorable man. With not a fiber do I believe the rumors that he betrayed the queen. Edward has only a snort for that and wordlessly leaves the cemetery. Conspiring, Hannah turns to you. Some of father's most loyal foyers want to finally escape Edward's iron rule over Bright Sands. Can you help me flee with them to Ditchwater Island to establish a new home? Perhaps the settlement will not be as splendid as Bright Sands, but the people trust that we can give them a better life. We will have to start small at first. At the moment, our ranks consist of a few farmers and workers, but if you do a good job, our settlement will surely grow quickly. And yeah, again, um, this narrative really falls to, fo follows the campaign of the computer game. And this is really what I kind of liked, actually. So they really are fans of the computer game. At least they spend some time <laughs> exploring what the game has to offer. And that's pretty much our very first goal. Sailing over to Ditchwater, which is represented by our little player board over here. And from there, yeah, we are basically trying to make a living and yeah, we'll be succeeding in the end over our bad uncle or terrible uncle Edward, that is. And yeah, I think with that being said, let's get cracking. The name of the game is to play our farmers and workers out there. We do have a lot of farmers that require bread. Unfortunately, all those bread farmers do need something else in return. So we need beer, we need canned food, we need bricks. But yeah, I think still starting with some bread so doesn't sound like a bad idea. So, and we right now, our industries in Ditchwater doesn't or don't produce any bread. So that's the first thing that we may want to do. On the other hand, we could debate bait to go for the cheap coal here. We do produce coal in our industry, but in order to produce coal, um, we need red workers, which we simply don't have. So we cannot produce coal, obviously. So I think the very first thing that we have to come up with is, uh, let's say, a somewhat more automated coal production in ditch water. And in order to get the coal mine out here, we need to produce some yeah, wood in this case. And if you didn't watch my walkthrough and my extended walkthrough of Anno 1800 or any other playthrough out there, the way how production in this game works is you have to pretty much activate your industries and then you virtually produce that goods. You will never get any real tokens. The only real resource out there is, I would say, gold, which we're not using in this very first chapter of the campaign. But everything else is virtual for that particular turn. What you're not using then is pretty much lost and gone. And in order to produce these planks here, we need to use a, uh, a farmer. So they are producing our planks. So we have virtually produced the planks we need for this coal mine up there. And yeah, this pretty much allows us to produce the coal mine. And by the way, in a solo game, you it's totally fine to just place out one of those um, industries here. But I simply put them out both. You cannot have the same industry twice in your um, settlement. There are some exceptions to the rules, depending on which, let's say, islands you are finding or old worlds. But in this case, again, they are simply out there. Simply ignore those. So again, we have produced the coal mine here, which we have to flip over and then we can place it here. Um, and we can also overbuild existing industries. Again, we don't have any red workers right now, even though I think we could and we have to maybe do that. Actually, yeah, we think we have to. Let's let's be careful. Let's not overbuild it too quickly just yet. Let's simply place it over here. We don't need the, the wharf here or the, the dock. So we can simply place it over here. And this is not considered to be the same industry, by the way, because this industry requires um, craftsmen, whereas this industry requires workers. So that's okay. You can have duplicate of those two. And again, for later industries, let's say for steel, for example, or for um, what else do we need here for these bricks? We definitely do need those red workers later on, the, the, the craftsmen. So we have to get them. So let's not overbuild them too quickly. 
Okay, this was our first action and also our first turn. We are revealing our first card here. We will place it like this. In this, let's say, very first chapter of the woods, we ignore everything that's on the card. And um, we have two different kind of cards here. So we have the normal ones and the more advanced ones, the engineers, the investors and the craftsmen. But we are only using those to give us some indication how far in we are in respect to our timing but again that was our very first turn then it's again back to us normally it would now be the another player's turn and usually those turns can go really really quick um, when you're playing this multiplayer sometimes you have to really think things through but you're doing one thing normally unless you are activating some of your workers here for example that you have built but yeah in this case in this very first chapter there's really not a lot going on the next thing that we have to do is to build our improved or automated, um, let's call it brick industry. We have a brick industry, but it also requires us to spend red workers or red craftsmen, which we don't have yet. So we have to be able to do that. So in order to build this industry now, we have to produce some coal. And luckily, we just did produce or build this industry here. So we are producing the coal works pretty much the same way. Virtually, we have produced the coal. Each of those industries, by the way, can be activated up to twi uh, two times. In a later version of the game, when you have gold available, you can basically move them back by paying some uh, money here or some gold in this case or there's also the action that you can basically celebrate a holiday then all of your workers will move back to uh, their houses but that's then pretty much the action for your turn so that's really something you want to move out as far as possible because it's an empty turn for you so that was basically the coal we have produced for that we are grabbing the brick industry and again we are placing it here right now there's no real reason to whatever overbuild any of our existing industries obviously we cannot build those industries into the waters but we can build them here onto the shoreline normally you will try to leave those open to give you more opportunities to build more of those wharfs here or docks but in this scenario it doesn't really matter we can simply overbuild them okay let's move the timer over here i think that makes more sense so this was our action already we are moving on again we can completely ignore what those workers are and then i guess we can in theory start producing the problem now is does it make sense yet we need more stuff so let's say for example in order to build our first worker this guy here we need a bread and we need a brick now um, in order to build the bread we can do that actually maybe that should be our next thing yeah let's do that so in order to build the bakery here we need some grain and we need some coal to fire up our ovens and right now yeah that shouldn't be a problem so here is the coal and here is the grain it doesn't really matter if it goes left or right but this is enough to build our bakery here let's build it over there again that's the end of our actions and i'm pretty sure that you can think this way think through way more way better than i do i'm really playing it very tactically here never having played this solo mode before i played the multiplayer game numerous times already but i have no clue in respect to the timing on this solo mode here so maybe i have to count things through but if i lose then it is what it is so that was our turn so we're already three actions in out of 25 and we haven't made a single progress just yet. Okay, so we do have bread and we do have bricks. So in theory, we could start building this lady over there. Do we want that just for the lab? No, we can't because the problem is for both of those, we would need blue workers, which we don't have anymore. We have one, but not two. What we could do though is to upgrade and maybe that's not a bad idea. We can upgrade our workers so we can crew, um, move one of those greens into a blue worker that is. Maybe that's what we should do for our next action. The thing is, it's rather wasteful right now because um, with our action, we can in theory do three up to three upgrades. Only doing one upgrade may not be the best thing in the world. On the other hand, does it really help us right now if we update this one worker? Because in order to upgrade this worker, you see this little symbol here. We need to spend one or 
produce one brick in order to move a green guy over here to a blue guy. This green guy can come from anywhere actually so we can also upgrade whatever one of those guys here for example and later on in order to upgrade someone here to this side. No we can't do that either actually. We can't do that either. I just see that now. We are not able to produce any red resources here because we are not able to build the goods here. So in this case, we would have definitely overbuilt those industries here for sure. This doesn't really matter too much. And maybe I should have showed you this. So I have moved those over. That was a little bit of a mulligan take takesy backsies sorry for that but yeah you really should familiarize yourself with the scenario but yeah i just noticed that we are really not able to upgrade any one of our workers here to the craftsman level because again we don't have those goods here available okay yeah but then what next actually i mean we need the cheaper steel here which would be this one but therefore we would need to come up with also one brick and one coal coal is already gone so we cannot build it anyway this round oh that's it really feels so wasteful is there anything we can prepare then maybe and actually i think not so we could pass now to get all our workers back because again yeah we cannot do this because coal is blocked this is coal this is coal. coal is blocked here's coal here we would need steel and a pick we have the pick free mm, we have the bread which is okay for beer we need coal oh that's so bad yeah we could go for the not really cheaper i mean we could go for the more versatile wood so having a second wood space could be beneficial but no we don't need wood either anymore actually because everything we needed wood for is already built no i think this doesn't really make sense maybe with our first action without spending a worker we could have done this instead but can we have more than enough green workers question is should we upgrade before we celebrate and i think we should let's do that and i already start to see <laughs> this can be a very tough puzzler actually Wow. Okay. So we will upgrade. So we'll go for an upgrade action. In order to upgrade a farmer into a worker, we need to spend a brick. So we have to build them a more sturdy house, it seems. So let's do that. So we are doing this. We are upgrading one of those guys over here. Doesn't really matter too much, which we take. We are simply replacing them. Um, whenever you're getting new workers, um, onto your space you get extra cards from the appropriate decks uh, when you upgrade that's not gonna happen so we are not adding more cards and keep in mind um, the goal of this game of this scenario is to get rid of all of our cards in our hand so yeah, let's not do that but this was still our action even though if we, we only upgraded once mm. on the other hand we could now use him to upgrade again but then we don't really have a lot of farmers out there and not sure how many farmers we actually do need later on do we need an extra let's 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 keep it slow for now so in theory yeah, we have the blue worker here we could do that again but then we are only running two farmers here and i think we still need hmm, do we need do we need a lot of farmers later on actually because all of our cards do need more advanced resources i think i don't see anything with some core resources yes we may still need some grain later on also some picks mm, with only two this might be tough let's not do that just yet no let's not do that just yet so I think the only viable option for our next turn is to recall all our workers up there. This is again called, I think, a holiday or so, a celebration, whatever. This is our action. They're all moving up, freeing up the space down there. And again, the workforce is available again. But again, that was our action. So we are already five cards into the game and haven't played a single card out there. Rather embarrassing. But now we have all our options available again. And right now I still feel like we should start preparing our industries before we start playing any cards because right now the cards don't do us any good in a normal multiplayer version of the game you would totally start playing those guys out all those cards out there because you would be able to leverage their benefits they would bring like this guy here um he needs booze and <laughs> 
some canned food and then he will basically give you an engineer which is then again important for future actions but in this case i think as we don't use those benefits here in this very first chapter i think it's really only this very first chapter actually we can pretty much ignore that and continue to um, basically prepare our industries let's do that then instead so i guess the next industry to build might be the beer industry here right i think this might go together rather nicely yeah so let's do that so let's see we need some grain and we need some of our cheap coal down here perfect so we can over we will build it over one of our red industries again we don't really need those during this scenario but again this was our action okay um then up next for bread we might also want to build the canned food down there we need some picks and we need some steel okay but in order to build steel we need bricks and coal let's still do that yeah we are going for the steel industry so we need um some brick and we need some coal so coal is gone for this round but i think let's build it over here perfect again this was our action you see this game is moving really fast at least this very first chapter of the game so i'm not right sure if it's any fun to watch but it still shows you what this game has to offer and yes it will ramp up um at least as of scenario three i think more and more options will get available to you already with um chapter two you will be able to leverage some of those goodies here some of those benefits here for example maybe i should have simply started at, at chapter two or chapter three let's see about that so i guess is it already should we start building anyone i mean we could go for the bread right now already no we can't because these are also two blue resources so i think again this doesn't really make sense and i guess we can still build one industry before we are calling it yes and again that should be the canned food here so we need a farmer to produce some picks and we need the new steel industry here to build the canned food industry we will build it over our sale and yeah that's basically it we still have one more farmer with this one farmer no we cannot do anything with that farmer yeah we could produce a new farmer actually so by producing one blank here we would this would give us a new farmer this would also give us one extra card into our hand and right now i'm not sure if that's what we should do actually but of course let's not forget we have to flip a card here this was a turn after all and again we have to send our workers home and again i'm not sure if we are really running out of time here this was our action and by the way in case this feels too easy for you all of those scenarios come with the normal easy mode of the game so you're placing 15 cards on top of 10 cards but you can also play it tougher to only place 12 cards on 10 cards so right now i have 25 cards available but in case you think nah that's too easy let's simply go with just 22 cards 22 actions that is and see how things go with that and again right now i have no clue i still have seven cards in my hand and seven cards it's seven more actions alone so we already have spent quite a few actually so yeah <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves here okay i just noticed that we don't need soap for this scenario right now because none of ours we are not very clean people it seems but i think yeah we are on the run we are trying to <laughs> make everything work so we cannot get too much involved into our weekly bathing routine mm, that is <laughs> keep it at that so but we still need these three industries here for sure so we need some clothing that makes sense we need sausage we want to eat not just canned food and yeah we need booze we need booze for sure it's, it's a very sad little world out there in ditch water right now uh, later on i think there is isn't there even i think yeah we have rum here later on for example i think that makes more fun and we have some champagne over here too so yeah we we will get to learn how to celebrate properly at some point in time but for now booze and beer have to make do yeah i think let's simply yeah let's get the other resources out there and we need booth twice so why not let's start yeah 
going for booze in the stream. So let's see. Um, this is some potato and we need some coal to boil it up. Um, we are not flipping it over or we cannot overbuild here, at least not meaningful. So let's do it like this. That again was our action. We are still in the first 15 cards of the deck. That's at least something. Again, when we see the first red, purple and I think turquoise um, characters appear here. So the craftsmen, the engineers or the investors, then we know we have 10 more turns left and then we really have to get moving for sure. And now, yeah, I think again, let's continue to go. We need to, we want to use our um, farmers at the best anyway. So let's go for some more sausage. So we are going to do this and we are going to do this. So we also are producing some sausage now. The last thing that we need is already problematic as we do need clothing. And again, coal is now out. And yeah, we have yarn, that's at least something, but we cannot really use it well. So I guess let's not do that just yet. So we have to produce some cards or build our first card, I think. And I think there is no reason not to build, I don't know, this nice lady over here. She requires some brick and she wants something to eat. So bread. So we have built our very first card. We will flip her over because again, we are not going to use her special ability. Again, we have one green worker left. I think we are not, and we have to, of course, this was also a production, of course. Hopefully I didn't forget that actually, but I guess let's call everyone back in. Again, this is our action. Okay, we are still green and blue. And yeah, I think we still want to use our farmer. So let's go with the last industry we really need to build, which is this one here. Oops, what was it? Ah, yeah. We need the urn and we need some more coal. So we have all the industries we need in order to build our cards. Okay, what's next? We have three blue workers and in theory we could continue now. Maybe we should upgrade now. I think we don't need any more green workers now because again all of those are now all, all of those cards are now more advanced resources so we don't need plank we don't need um, grain potato pigs or yarn no they're all advanced resources so with we could now consider to basically upgrade twice in one single action. That's really the good thing and really something to keep in mind. And again, did we move this over? Did we move the card? Oh, I kept forgetting. So if I'm really winning by one card left, then I might have to challenge myself on that. But right now I'm not sure how things will go. Mm, we can we don't need the green workers so why not upgrade them? So yeah, we are going for an upgrade action and we can upgrade up to twice. So we are going to do this and this. We are moving those guys over, which means we still have three more workers here left, which is definitely cool. But this was definitely our action. Oh, that's a nice card while getting four gold. That's huge. And then, yeah, we can basically continue to produce. Oh, maybe with the third action, we could have also upgraded this guy. Again, we had three upgrade. Let's do that. Oh no, we don't have the spaces here. What am I talking about? No, forget about it. Forget about it that I even said that. We don't have any more brick industry. That's a pity. So I guess in this case, again, it doesn't really matter which resources we are going for. Let's simply go for this fella here. He wants some booze. He wants some canned food to be happy. So we have built this card here. Again, we are moving our next card over. We are still in the greens, kind of, which is good. But yeah, with only one blue worker, there's really nothing we can do. If this would still be free, then yes, this might be a thing. But no, we are moving everything back to things. So this was our holiday and now we are in the red. We have 10 more turns in order to win this game and we have five more cards. So should be possible. But I really think we have to play it cleverly now to 
up our chances but there's no real not a lot of overlap actually i see and we have enough turns available no i think we should be good actually and now i am regretting that i didn't upgrade the green worker when i did the very first upgrade i i told you let's play it slow and just upgrade this one work but i think at back then i would have been able to also upgrade one of those used workers here uh, farmers into a worker but okay that's on me um, again, not sure if that makes a big of a difference here now, but if you're really playing the harder level, then I could imagine that things could get more tricky. Okay, let's play this priest, I guess. Yeah, we need a priest in our settlement for sure. So we need some clothing, we need some sausage. So we have built this fella. Again, we are flipping this one over. Also, wow, that's a perfect thing, but yeah, that's yeah, but that's a, a tough one. That's an eight. Yeah, that's an eight one. So definitely tough to build. We need coffee. We need these cannons here. Um, yeah, that's uh, really bad to build. And then I think, yeah, up next, let's go for this fella here. One and one. We have put him out. Again, we are flipping one over. We still have two more workers up there. And yeah, I think we should be able to build either. Let's go for another lady now. Yeah, she also wants <laughs> booze and some canned food, which we still have. Yeah, we have canned food here. So we have brought her to ditch water too. Um, and then again, yeah, we cannot activate. We could upgrade it. But again, it's an uneven number of things. So I guess it doesn't really matter to, to upgrade um, this farmer now to, to blue one because, yeah, because all of those need at least two resources out there. So one extra worker or farmer doesn't do us anything good anyway. So I think in this case, we are simply bringing those guys and girls back we are flipping this one over and i think up next uh, he or she not sure also looks very drunkish with this red nose so she, she he wants or they i think that's the proper thing um we are doing this bread and beer moving this one over too and then yeah let's flip it and then we are bringing out another Bread hungry fella. He only wants to eat. Yeah, he looks pretty healthy actually. And some canned food. And that's pretty much the end of the game. Let's flip over another card. We still have five cards left actually. So I do think this very first scenario seems to be relatively simple to beat. Again, I think I may have forgotten to flip one or two of those cards, but even then we are still in a very good shape but ultimately we were able to yeah take our first fo footsteps on our new island of ditch water and there is even a small narrative in case of a success excellent all these people now have a new home father would be very proud of you i I think you are absolutely right. And yeah, that's pretty much the very first chapter of a Anno 1800. Not really a nail biter this very first mission or chapter of the 10 chapter -y campaign. So there is still a lot to explore again. Do let me know if you want me to continue. And if you want me to continue, also let me know if I should really go now to chapter two or maybe should really jump ahead a little bit further. I think as of chapter three, things will definitely start to ramp up. But you will already see a lot of additional stuff in chapter two as well and yeah before i close uh, another huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there really do appreciate all your support there you guys are amazing if you want to support my little channel here you will find a link to my page on patreon you can join my community here on youtube very easily uh, like and subscribe leave a comment everything helps and yeah with that being said really hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye